This is a demonstration video looking at carbon dioxide and some of the reactions involving carbon dioxide. So to start with, one of my favourite reactions involving carbon dioxide is the carbonation of a tasty beverage. In this case an enzyme called yeast has reacted with glucose forming an alcohol and carbon dioxide. And the carbon dioxide is dissolved in water and as we reduce the pressure by opening the beverage we can see carbonation or bubbles forming within the liquid. We can show the conversion of glucose to produce carbon dioxide as one of the byproducts. If we take a bottle containing sugar solution, to this we add some brewer's yeast or a strain of yeast which is used for bread making. As you can see the yeast is in powder form. We add the yeast to the solution in the bottle and swirl the yeast into the solution. And now we attach a balloon to the top of the bottle to catch any gas which is generated. After about 15 minutes the solution starts to froth up and a gas is generated as we can see the balloon is starting to inflate. After about two hours, you can see the balloon has significantly filled up with gas. One of the demonstrations you can do to demonstrate the carbon dioxide is a heavier than air gas. Is to fill a container with carbon dioxide. In this case, we're using a vase. And to fill the vase with carbon dioxide, we take a balloon with carbon dioxide and we empty it into the vase. And to trap the carbon dioxide within the vase, we place a piece of cardboard over the top. And we pour the carbon dioxide out of the vase in a similar way as if we were pouring water out of the vase. And this extinguishes the flame on the candle, as carbon dioxide does not normally support combustion. Dry ice is another form of carbon dioxide. This is solid carbon dioxide. So if we place a piece of dry ice into some water, we can create the typical theatre fog. If we look at the temperature pressure phase diagram for carbon dioxide, there are the usual three states of matter for most materials. These are solid, liquid and gas. There is also a supercritical region where CO2 can behave as a liquid and a gas simultaneously. This has some interesting characteristics for solvent extraction. Normal atmospheric pressure is shown at the bottom of this graph on the Y scale. So you can see if we maintain this pressure and we have solid carbon dioxide as the solid CO2 warms up, it will convert directly from a solid into a gas. This process is known as sublimation. And the historical reason why solid carbon dioxide is known as dry ice. Effectively, it does not melt. It goes directly from a solid into a gas. If we place some dry ice into a pressure vessel, it is possible to form an equilibrium between liquid CO2 and gaseous CO2. At around room temperature, this equilibrium will be around 50 to 70 atmospheres. So, if we try to form this equilibrium at room temperature within a soda bottle, the structural integrity of the soda bottle is insufficient.
If we use a stronger pressure vessel, we can form this equilibrium between liquid and gaseous CO2. So here we're loading up a pressure vessel with some dry ice. Once it is loaded, we seal the top. And as the dry ice warms up to room temperature, the pressure increases. Once the pressure vessel and carbon dioxide reach thermal equilibrium at room temperature, the equilibrium pressure is around 50 atmospheres. So with this temperature and pressure, there will be an equilibrium between liquid CO2 and gaseous CO2. If we cause a rapid state change and convert the liquid CO2 into gaseous CO2 with an expansion, we can cause a cooling effect. As demonstrated here, where we're wrapping cloth around the bottom of the pressure vessel and opening a valve. The rapidly expanding carbon dioxide is causing a cooling effect and we can convert some of our carbon dioxide into dry ice. Another reaction we can show carbon dioxide is carbon dioxide reacting with sodium hydroxide and lithium hydroxide. These white pellets contain a mix of lithium and sodium hydroxide. The pellets are designed with a very high surface area to accelerate the reaction of carbon dioxide. The pellets also contain an indicator on the surface which changes colour when it reacts with carbon dioxide. So these pellets change from white to purple. If we place these pellets inside a plastic bottle, Fill the plastic bottle with carbon dioxide, you can see a color change. You can also see some water vapor being generated by, as a byproduct of the reaction. And if we seal the bottle by screwing the top on, as the pellets absorb the carbon dioxide, the atmospheric pressure around the outside of the bottle effectively crushes the bottle as shown here. This technique of carbon dioxide absorption is used by scuba divers. They use rebreathers to recirculate the air in their breath by scrubbing out the carbon dioxide. So one of the main generation sources of carbon dioxide is the combustion of fossil fuels. And we burn a lot of fossil fuels. The only problem with carbon dioxide is that we're producing rather a lot of it. And as you can see from this graph, through the use of fossil fuels, we're currently producing in excess of 35 gigatons of carbon dioxide per year. And unfortunately, this number is increasing. There is a correlation between the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and global temperature. As the amount of carbon dioxide increases, so does temperature. Just going back and trying to put that 31.5 gigatons of carbon dioxide released in 2020 into perspective, if we turn this carbon dioxide into a sheet of dry ice, that sheet of dry ice would have a thickness of 8.3 centimeters over the entire land surface area of the United Kingdom. Imagine that accumulating year upon year. This is a significant amount of carbon dioxide. So what can we do to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide that we're emitting to the atmosphere? Here's a couple of ideas. Maybe we use more fossil-free energy, renewable energy. Maybe we eat less meat. Maybe we start buying goods with built-in obsolescence or high amounts of embedded carbon in their manufacture. Transportation is also another big emitter of carbon dioxide. So maybe we should look at ride sharing. As for the environment, maybe we should plant more trees or respect and look after the oceans. And the more drastic option is geoengineering, where we actually remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere using some chemical extraction technique. 
and then store that carbon dioxide that you've captured in a secure vault, maybe under the ground and used oil wells. Please do your bit, please subscribe, and thank you for watching.